from Wisconsin is recognized for four minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank my friend for yielding me this time. And Mr. Speaker, I have a great deal of respect and admiration for the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, my friend from Michigan. Uh, and I hope his solution here today, given the dysfunction that we've seen and the process coming out of this Congress in recent years, is not just to come forward with a series of permanent changes to the U.S. tax code without paying for any of it and exploding our national debt for future generations to have to grapple with. But unfortunately, that's been the trend in the Ways and Means Committee over the last couple of months. I also want to commend, you know, the work that the gentlelady from Tennessee has done with the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Davis, in putting together this bipartisan bill. I'm all for simplification of the tax court. I'm all for streamlining these tax credits to make it easier for students and their families to better afford higher education. I'm all for finding a bipartisan path forward to make sure that no student is left behind, that those doors of educational opportunity are there and open for all Americans. But we ought to do that the right way, not the wrong way. And unfortunately, the bill here before us today is the wrong way to approach the issue. First of all, it's one of 14 permanent changes to the tax code that have been reported out of the Ways and Means Committee now, exceeding over $800 billion without any of it being offset and without a nickel of it being paid for. This on the heels of the last few years, we've been trying to figure out a way to get our fiscal house put back in order. There's been a whole lot of shrill and a whole lot of crying on this floor about runaway budget deficits and the unsustainable debt that our nation has accumulated and the fact that we have to borrow so much money from China. This bill compounds that problem. It doesn't solve it. And, it, and this bill alone would add close to $97 billion to the national debt over the next 10 years. Again, none of it paid for. But there are also some substantive problems with this bill, too, that unfortunately, due to a lack of hearings in Ways and Means Committee, due to a lack of discussion and feedback from our universities throughout the country, is not addressed. Not least of which, and I've heard this from universities back in Wisconsin, is that there's a significant administrative change hiding in this bill. Currently, schools can report either eligible tuition charges that are billed to students or paid to students. This bill takes away the billing aspect of reporting to the IRS. Now, that is probably a trend that we ought to pursue and should fix in the future. But to do it abruptly, given where the computer systems lie with our universities right now, is bound to cause severe disruption in regards to these tax credits for students. And I'm afraid that has not been well vetted and it hasn't been thought through because, again, it's an election year. And we're racing these bills to the floor in order to do our press releases back home and score cheap political points with constituencies that would prefer to see legislation advance without paying for it. But it's something that we ought to fix before we burden the bursar's offices throughout the nation in trying to revamp their computer system overnight. They're telling us it's not going to work. And furthermore, and the gentleman from Michigan has highlighted the impact this is going to have on our graduate students. The graduate students are affected by the streamlining of the education credits that are embodied in this bill because only four years are, are available uh, under this legislation. And it's expected to have a profound impact on the affordability of, of graduate education for students throughout the nation. And I don't think it has been vetted all that well either. And it's because we're not doing regular order around here. It's an election year, I get it. And there's nothing easier in the world than bring permanent changes to the tax code that everyone would desire to see, but without making the tough decision and paying for it as well, while at the same time coming forward with budget resolutions as cutting back on the availability of Pell Grants for low-income students or work-study programs for low-income students or TRIO or GEAR-UP programs that I, benefit I yield the gentleman additional minute. The gentleman is recognized for an additional one minute. Or TRIO or GEAR-UP programs that are geared for low-income students. Somehow, some way, it became fashionable to cut those programs that have benefited low-income students, including myself. When I was a kid growing up, my family didn't have the financial means to send me to school. So I was, avail I was able to qualify for Pell Grant. I did do work study all four years. And without that availability, I don't know where I would have ended up with my education. That's where we seem to go to first in the budget for cuts and then coming forward today on a bill that will add $97 billion to the deficit without paying for it and without vetting the way it should be. We've still got time. 
Let's do this the right way. And I would encourage my colleagues, vote no and give this body time to fix some of the deficiency in the bill, but also to make the tough decision and do it in a fiscally responsible manner. I yield back.